good morning all of you a uh, very very warm and a hearty welcome for the first uh, corporate uh, seminar conducted and hosted by the first time launched youtube channel of pimsr so i welcome all our viewers participants for this talk today which you are going to listen from dr pramod sadar joshi uh, we are also celebrating mahatma education society pillai group of institutions is also celebrating its 50 years of its successful uh, presence in the field of education so to celebrate the 50 years uh, we have started a series of talks by various eminent speakers from the industry academia and other fields so uh, on behalf of pillai institute of management studies and research i dr nivedita shreyans director of public relations welcomes you all for the first webinar which will be conducted by dr pramod sadar joshi so let us begin with the short introduction of our speaker today very happy to introduce dr pramod sadar joshi let me tell you the most wanted and the finest speakers from the industry dr pramod sadar joshi is the founder and the ceo of talent smith consultancy hi pramod his expertise lies in strategy transformation leadership startup architects and he is a certified business coach of marshall goldsmith he is the ex director of oracle asia pacific and he is a empanel c suite executive coach of a very reputed institute in india that is isb indian school of business and he is also senior advisors for various big firms like jp morgan kpmg services he was director hr and head of oracle idbi microsoft hdfc bank cognizant and citibank and a vast experience in the field of hr a prolific speaker a speaker which is followed by lot of youth all over india and a speaker which who does lot of research before talking so without taking much time i would request uh, pramod to take over but before that i also would like to introduce uh, dr prashant lokhande sir hello sir prashant sir hello, hello. so uh, welcome Hello, yeah we have dr prashant lokhande who is the head of training and placement uh, department of pillai college of engineering and uh, an expert in the field of placements so we welcome you sir. so dr prashant lokhande will be there with us throughout and i also would like to introduce uh, dr ashish sapati and uh, dr shailendra pavaskar Oh, who are the IT backup strong support? The faculty members who are there giving us support and backup. Can I see Ashish sir on the screen, please? Hi, Ashish. And can I see Pavaskar sir? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Ah, uh, that's Shailendra Pavaskar there. Speakers. Good afternoon, ma'am. Dr. Pramod Sadar Joshi. Again, welcome to all the students and faculty members of Pillai Group of Institutions to join this webinar. We have lot of uh, participations from colleges all over Mumbai, from Maharashtra, and also at national level, some colleges and faculty members have joined it. So we welcome all the corporates. We welcome all the different organizations who are watching this webinar today. i'm definitely sure you're going to take lot of insights today from pramod's talk thank you so much for joining and stay tuned with us for this wonderful talk on to pramod good afternoon everybody welcome good afternoon everybody welcome to this very very interesting and contextual topic uh, which is of interest for everybody before i start off at the outset 
I would like to really express my gratitude and thanks to Dr. Pillai of uh, the Pillai Institute of Management Sciences, uh, Dr. Nivedita, Dr. Pauskar, and Dr. Acharya. Uh, they've really helped me a lot uh, in putting this together. And I'm sure everybody here is very excited to know what's going on in this field. So the topic being impact of COVID-19 on placements, internships, and what have you. And what's really the action plan if there is any? So with that, uh, allow me to just give a very good 30 second uh, backdrop on who I am and uh, what do I bring to the table? So currently I uh, founded a company called Talents with Consulting, we're into strategy, uh, business transformation, executive coaching, startup advisory and what have you. Uh, before that, I used to be senior director for Asia Pacific for its team strategy and transformation at Oracle India at Oracle Asia Pack, sorry. Uh, I've been very blessed and fortunate to have great experience, as you could see there, uh, across business transformation, sales, marketing, analysis, um, analytics at SIM technology, OD chain management, and CEO and CXO coaching. All these are done at wonderful workplaces like Citibank, uh, HDFC Bank, I was part of the startup of HDFC Bank and Microsoft when they started off in India. Uh, then had a study with Cognizant, Computer Science Corporation, IDBI Group, I was a group uh, director of HR for the entire group, uh, JP Morgan, and then with Oracle. Uh, I'm also a very passionate uh, teacher. I've been teaching for the last 25 years, and that's one of the main reasons why I accepted this invitation, because I think based on my experience, I bring a lot of insights, if you will, based on immense expertise and experience uh, through campus interviews over the last 25, 30 years. Um, as we speak, I'm an impanel coach at the Indian School of Business Hyderabad, and I've been very fortunate to have been teaching at various B schools all over the country and also abroad. So with that, allow me to straight away do a deep dive into what we're really talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, do I need to tell you life and business or life like business is a game and they both are a game. If that be the truth, then really let's come down to some base brass tacks. If it's a game, life and business, both of them are game, let's play 100%. Two, let's play very fair and square, i.e. very legitimate manner and in complete framework of legalities. We take full responsibilities, no blame game, be a man and we take full ownership. And most important, we got to have fun in this game. If you're not going to be having fun, you'll really be bogged down with worries, doubts and fears which will eat you up. You win some, you lose some, that's the other part of the game. And the other, the, the third part of the game is, if you're not enjoying a game, then you're not playing a game. With that, let me tell you what I'm going to cover in the next 90 minutes. I got about 90 minutes, so maybe I'll do about 60 minutes or 55 minutes of presentation and then really give uh, leave it open for Q&A. Number one, I'm going to really talk about macroeconomic impact of COVID-99. A lot of data here, a lot of research. I love research, I love numbers. Uh, that's the backdrop in which you need to do both the technical pizzazz as well as your personal impact and your personal development. Number two, what are the challenges which are which are coming out of these micro macroeconomic impact? Mm -hmm. Number three, what really are the specific action plan, especially for a whole lot of academicians, students, and people who are on the throes of internship. Some of them are also in the throes of a job. Some of them have got the job. Some of them have not yet got the job. And therefore, let's see what it is. And eventually, it all converges down to a huge amount of personal leadership. Most important, the need of the hour. Let me start with a very wonderful statement I picked up somewhere. And I'll tell you where I picked up. The future, ladies and gentlemen, belongs to those who know where they belong. These are not my polls of wisdom. These are picked up from, can you believe it, a movie called Divergent. I'm sure all you youngsters, the millennials would have seen this movie. And I thought, what a deep, profound statement this is. Because if you do not know where you belong, for all your hard work, for all your intelligence, and for all your charisma, you might not just win the game because you're far removed away from your intra-psychic persona and its behavior patterns. Let's see where we belong. Belonging also means to the environment with that we live in right now. So towards this and what I did was I really dipped into a fantastic research done by Fiki and Dhruva Consultancy. In fact, it's not older than last 10 days. It was done in the third week of April. And that was um, 
the study which I'm going to base on. But before that, let's see where you belong. The new normal, ladies and gentlemen, is first thing is about staying alive. I'm not referring to the BG song alone, but it really is about you having your heart, mind, body, and soul intact before you even play the game. So therefore, staying alive becomes extremely important and imperative, not just medically, not just metabolism-wise, but also in terms of for uh, spirit and genuine. It's an age, it's a time marked by unprecedented and intimidating disruptions. You know what's happening. The models have got disrupted. Structures have gone for a toss. And therefore, in this chaos is what we need to arise like a phoenix. Highest degree of unpredictability. Here today, gone tomorrow. Funding is stopped. Products have gone out of the window. The products which were hitherto not cared for, like a mask and a sanitizer, is now the more hot than gold and diamonds, and honestly more valuable than them. It is a stress test, like an iron goes through a stress test, a steel goes through a stress test. To me, this is a stress test of the most complex kind and degree. There are huge, humongous geoeconomic power imbalance that's going to happen. The elephants do not know anymore to dance. The giants have fallen by the wayside. And maybe there is a new order of things which is going to come. And therefore, a huge realignment is required. And most important, ladies and gentlemen, you and I, young guys, girls out there, we need to refit and readjust to a redefined psychosocial ecosystem. What I mean by that is the relationships, the body language, the lingo on the WhatsApp, the technology, the social behavior, the social distancing, all that's going to impact. And the reason I'm just summarizing this is all the action plan about internships and placements, etc., are both drivers and derivatives of this new normal. So this was a Dhruva survey I was talking about conducted in the April 3rd week. 30 sectors were covered. Good one. 380 staggering companies covered. Again, a good massive breadth and depth of data. So let's look at some of the very key things which is going to impact you and me. 60% of the uh, survey sample expect economy to normalize in nine months. If you ask me, add easily another six months. So next one and a half years, you're really fighting the chaos. 70% believe it will have a severe impact on the business and the business models. What is the expected level of impact of your company, any company that you talked about? 40% is very high. 32% is high. If you mix that up, 72% believe it's an extremely high level of impact on any company of the 380 companies covered. 43% would expect the economy to normalize in 12 months, 27% in nine months. Easily add another six months to both of them. So I think you and I are looking for the next two years of just adjusting to the new normal. Very important. What are the expansion plans? And why are we talking about expansion plans? This community of interns and the MBA and the BTEC finally students, they are looking for jobs which are a derivative of expansions. And guess what? 33% of the survey population says they defer that over 12 months. 40% say defer that over 6 to 12 months. So hold your horses, guys. If you think you got that hot job coming your way on the campus right away, no more what happened two years back is the case today. Okay. Um, funding is very important, the financial constraints. Everybody has to go through it. 67% of the population which sampled were found uh, were found constraints being in funding fixed costs, the, the borrowing costs and the funding costs. 63% said availability of additional capital for expansion. Now you see the linkage, therefore the expansion is getting impacted because the capital itself is not available and 43% for capital expansion and 28% for refinancing existing loans. And the NPS is all our story about existing loans. What's the financial cost, ladies and gentlemen? 33% believe there'll be an increase by over 10%. That's a very conservative estimate. Easily add another six, five to 6%, <clears throat> excuse me. 31% believe increase will be up to 10%. Okay, what's the business outlook? in the next post COVID, where all you guys who are out there in the job market are going to look up and salivate for the jobs. 41% believe there'll be a degrowth after 20%. Ladies and gentlemen, I repeat, degrowth. 
right? It's not growth, it's degrowth back to 20%. And the over 20% is another 29%. So that's about 50 to 70% people are now of the of the 380 companies surveyed saying there'll be a degrowth. So what luck and chance do you and I have? So is it all despair? Not really. We're going to look that up because this session is going to be all about positivity and optimism. So what are the key challenges for businesses? Ladies and gentlemen, 81% is managing costs. So if you think you're going to get a very fatly paid internship, forget it. Most of it will be pro bono. Are you ready for it? 74% believe there's going to be weak demand from, for any product, you know, from what straps to shirts to what have you. 40% on supply chain issues, availability of financing, 45% people of the company survey believe that availability of finance is going to be a serious constraint. And lo and behold, manpower availability. Now you would say, wait a minute, how come we are here for jobs and why would there be manpower availability? 36% is going to be key challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, what they mean is right person for the right job at the right time at the right cost. Now that's manpower, that's recruiting, that's that's um, really supplying the human resources. Right time, right price, right job at the, at the right quality, right? And therefore it's a challenge. Okay, and weakening rupee, of course, is a huge challenge. It's about 74 bucks to a dollar now. You know how that's going to pan out. What's the unemployment rate, ladies and gentlemen? I just read you know, uh, our data from CMIE. 120 million have lost jobs in the last two to three months. The blue traders, the white collar, the blue collars. So all India are standing out about a staggering 27%. By the way, 122 million jobs lost is roughly four times the number that's there in the US. It's about 36 million. It's about 30 to 35 million. And we are at four times. So just behold. And guess what? A lot of people are now returning from all over the world back into India, you know, who are going to be come, coming back either their H1Bs have not got processed or the green card hasn't come through or they all want to come back home. So they're going to join the employment market. So beware. Okay. What's the impact on job creation? Ladies and gentlemen, this is COVID-19, right? 39% of the company surveyed of the 380 company said reduction by over 10%. So be under no hallucination or illusion that it's going to all sum up because some people are going to tell you, hey, wait a minute, there are a thousand companies which are going to walk out of China and they're going to come to India. Yes, great statement of objective and purpose. But when and how that fructify is to be seen. And in that backdrop, so reduction of 10% by 39% people. 21% see reduction between 5 to 10% and 15% up to 10%. So job creation, especially those of you who are listening to this session uh, who are in the final year and the cusp of a campus placement, I don't think it's going to be as juicy and you'll have so many low hanging fruits as you had with your seniors and your super seniors. <clears throat> Very interesting. Graph this one. You see India's GDP, which is about $3 trillion economy, right? Uh, it is it is largely in the red zone. So 52% of that GDP is in the red zone. And you and I know red zone right now is under lockdown. And that's because it's a classic debate of lives versus livelihood. You certainly want to increase the livelihood by having the GDP increased. But if that's going to come at the cost of lives, basically lives itself, then what's the point in growing? So that's going to be a perennial debate. And each leader of each country has got to take a call based on his challenge and his canvas. All right. So therefore, 52% uh, of the GDP is coming from the red zone. So we need to be careful of that. And lastly, initiatives taken by the company, 81% have enabled work from home. Now, why am I saying this data here, uh, sharing this data? Ladies and gentlemen, better get used to a different work ethos. TCS, I believe, has just announced that even post COVID 19, <clears throat> almost 65 to 70% people will be working from home even when the normalcy sets back because they found out it's a huge advantage actually and they are going to have a huge cost saves. And therefore, beware about you adopting to new technology and methodology and psychology of working from home. And 75% is about awareness creation and 74% <clears throat> is about safety measures. Okay, that was the new normal, ladies and gentlemen, based on COVID-19, the very title of the subject. This is another new normal which you've already been living with. If I may ask you what's a residential address, it's not a house number, a street number. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new digital world 
which is the new normal. This, ladies and gentlemen, is your residential address. This is where you live, eat, breathe, and express yourself. So to me, it's virtually living in this world. And what are the nuances of this new digital world? You're perpetually in the world of robotics, core banking platforms, Internet of Things, big data, mobile, and this is going to be the norm. It, it, it just not <clears throat> a, a rickshaw or a link to how to use the Paytm. It's all about extremely complex degree of data analytics, big science of data, and robotics, and Internet of Things, okay? Which, go, which is going to result in huge technologies, AI and machine learning, you all know about it. You're, most of you are probably specializing in it. Huge blockchain technology going to operate. Autonomous software, the driverless cars, uh, the Internet of Things, we talked about it. And of course, how are you going to blend the human versus technology interface? I've always said, if you want to have your employees on cloud nine, i.e. being happy, you better ensure that you are on cloud, i.e. the cloud technology. Just play a word there. The high touch versus the high tech. And that's going to be the challenge, ladies and gentlemen. You and the freshers and the final year MBAs will really need to know how to navigate this map. The very interesting slide, and this probably has already taken a change in the last two months, right? Because people are working from home and huge access to internet. So this is what happened in 2019. In one minute, i.e. the 60 seconds, there were 3.8 million Google searches, 1 million Facebook logins, 18.1 million uh, text messages, 4.5 million YouTube videos viewed. Netflix had roughly 700,000 hours watched in just one minute all over the world. It's a complex web of data, numbers, and speed. And who said in the world of technology and finance, there's no romance? Ladies and gentlemen, check out this piece here that in Tinder, in one minute, you had 1.4 million swipes. Right, so people are going to use technology to now to have meditation, to yoga, to including uh, finding their uh, partners. Right, so that's essentially indicating speed, and with speed comes your ability to assimilate data. I would really like you to focus on this data because it's all part of COVID-19, which is going to impact the atmosphere and the ecosystem we live in. On the left side, extreme left, is the structured data. The pictures symmetrically organized pretty much shows and gives away what it means to have a symmetrical data, structured data. And in between is the unstructured data. And therefore, if you see the unevenness in the unstructured data, you'll see it's very unstructured. It's coming from videos. It's coming from LinkedIn. It's coming from Facebook. And it's pounding pressure hitting you time after time, second after second. And the key message in this slide is, ladies and gentlemen, as you go or, or post-COVID-19, the volume of structured data is going to be minuscule and the volume of unstructured data is going to be huge. So young MBAs and BTECs and, and all the graduates out there master the art of interpreting, firstly understanding, correctly interpreting, and then applying the huge volume of unstructured data that's going to be facing you um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Having said that, I've always believed, ladies and gentlemen, if you torture, data enough, it will indeed most probably tell you what you want it to tell you. It's a very cheeky, mischievous statement here. Some of you must be having a smirk here. What I really mean is if you have a huge appetite for data, but if it's not counterbalanced by a good right brain and you're going to torture data to influence people to believe a certain thing which you want them to believe, it indeed is possible. And therefore, which brings me back to the next concept, you got to balance out your left brain with your right brain. You got to balance out the cognitive intelligence with the creative intelligence. You know why? Because the cosmic and the quantum intelligence is the new name of the game. If you want to really confront the new normal, it's this kind of blend that you need to carry. And therefore, even if in terms of building up your resilience and your action plan that you've been talking about, you need to have a great plan and you need to know where to get it and how to get it and how fast you need to get it. Okay, one option out for you is to have a blend of right brain and left brain. What Stanford really produced some time back, the entire design, the, 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 the science and the discipline of design thinking process. And the first word in design thinking is empathy. And empathy is a largely a right brain activity. So all you guys, engineers and techies out there who think you're great at quantitative, congratulations. I indeed respect you for that. But that ain't good enough. In fact, that's not even good to start with. 
Do you have a counterbalancing factor of empathy, which is really getting the skin of the character of a product, of a place, of a price, of a promotion, of, a, of people? And if you do not have empathy, you can't therefore then define the problem appropriately. And if you can't do that, forget ideating, forget prototyping and forget testing. And therefore the starting point is empathy. In fact, if you read this fantastic book by Satya Nadella of Microsoft, he's written a book called Hit Refresh. That book largely talks about empathy and you better master that skill no matter which part of life you are, stage of life you are, well, that's a new thing. And what it all means is really about inspiration. Leaders right now, the number one quality they need in COVID-19 times, all the corporate leaders, are they carrying the body language and the character to inspire people? Technology can always be mastered. Data can be learned. But inspiration that comes from within, including you interns out there who are wanting internships and not getting internship, you've got to remain inspired. Only when you remain inspired, you're going to know how to ideate. And once you ideate is when you get the action items, <clears throat> the action plans for implementation. And therefore, be very clear this chain of inspire, ideate, and implement. And therefore, I would largely be covering in the later part of my presentation, are you inspired? Are you inspirational? Is your boss inspirational? Because in COVID-19, if there's one thing that's required, is a lot of right brain and humaneness. We'll come to that in a second. <clears throat> Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about augmented humanity. And in fact, this augmentation of humanity is actually being challenged with so many deaths happening every day. So what does that constitute? You really got to have very smart people who have amazingly balanced mind to advise. Because you youngsters are going to be following that advice. If not following, knowingly or unknowingly, voluntarily or involuntarily, you'll be an, uh, uh, not a victim, but a receiving end of that advice. Uh, to implement that, you have extremely smart machine. The degree of automation that's going to happen, especially COVID-19 with social distancing, is going to be humongous. So those of you who have an allergy towards technology, machine, etc., you better brace yourself and put on your thinking hats. And lastly, there are hugely smart business that are going to anticipate, anticipate from you. And this is also a great um, idea for action plan for interns. And you will need to anticipate business needs. And this is going to anticipate a lot of power from you, power of intellect and power of empathy. And that's augmented humanity. And therefore, as you know, digital changes pretty much every damn thing. So I said COVID-19, the new normal, this is another normal which you need to deal with. So people with allergy towards digitization will need to really rethink and really get on to the high digital maturity curve ASAP. The moment you're only going to do a lip sympathy, especially leaders and MDs, if there are any on this call, if you're going to do it because it's a fad, you're going to bite the dust very fast. It's got to be embedded into the DNA of every which employee of your organization. And that picture says it all, how the transformation has gone from what to what, where AI has played a huge, huge uh, role in terms of reasoning, information, processing, planning, what have you, all right? And therefore, it's important at this point in time, when the whole world is impacted by Corona and the COVID-19, as they call it, let's really take a quick look at what are really 7 billion people doing on this earth, roughly 7, 7.3 now, or 7.4. As you could see, 1.7 billion people are in services. Is this 1.7 billion going to be impacted? Absolutely. Uh, civil aviation, flying, flying industry, hotel industry, BPO, IT, ITs is going to come under huge pressure of cost of people not taking to flying and restaurants and what have you. They're going to be hugely impacted. 1.7 billion people, right? That's almost 25, 30% of 7 billion. 1.9 billion are too young right now, and maybe a lot of them are on this call who are going to be knocking at the at the doorstep to saying we need jobs. 400 million in entrepreneurship. I want this tribe to grow, and I'm sure with COVID-19 and pushing people, pushing the envelope, a lot of people are going to be expanding in the area of entrepreneurship. This number should go. 430 million people are unemployed. You straight away add at least another 200, 300, 400 million across the world. So this is going to balloon because of COVID-19 and lack of business, new technology, and basically demand just not existing. 577 million, about 600 million are upwards 
of 60 plus. So they'll do the retirement mode, 800 million to industrial jobs. A lot of these people probably could going to be, uh, they're going to be laid off because there's going to be change. 1.4 billion in agriculture. My next slide is very interesting, simply because this is GDP wise split up of the world. And obviously, um, United States at 20 billion or 20 trillion uh, dollar, uh, 20 trillion dollar economy, uh, China at about 16 trillion. Look at India. Now there's one, one not so good news here. India with a population of 1.3 billion is contributing to just about 3% at 2.9 or 2.7 trillion dollar economy. And therefore our prime minister said, let's go and get to the $5 trillion economy. Is COVID-19 going to be a huge impediment to this? We don't know. We'll need to see how it expands. On the face of it, it definitely has slowed down every country, not just India, into its tracks, right? And there are, all, there are already other companies which are countries which are going to be wanting a bigger pie of this. So it's a very powerful slide. But the good news in this is this potential for India to go to that $5 trillion economy and be, make a statement to the world leaders. Okay. So to do all this, we need talent. And talented are the people, 1,000 people, I believe, have registered for this course. Thank you so much. I feel very honored. 1,000 people have registered for this webinar. These 1,000 people are the talent. So in a bit of a, a humorous sense, here comes talent. Okay, This is how the talent is going to come after jobs. Think about all those people coming from Australia, New Zealand, USA, Russia, England, and back into India, our own Indian brothers and sisters. Already adding to the pressure, which is well exemplified by this rather humorous graffiti out here. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a war for talent. Only the fittest and only the best are going to survive. Are you one of them? Are you scaling up? And that's the action plan that you and I need to talk about. All right. So therefore, a lot of people on this call I saw, I would like to believe, are millennials. These are young, but their thing is, ye dil mange more. I want it here. I want it right now. I want all of it. Fantastic. Congratulations. I love your ambition. I love your optimism. But is that going to hold true anymore, at least for the next 80 to 24 months? Having said that, for seniors on this call, I just want to highlight, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of instant gratification. Well, well, I don't know if it's going to be as instant as it was until four months back. People are going to slow down and they need to recalibrate their expectations of speed as a look at COVID-19 in the eyes. So then, what is this millennial DNA? Well, fantastic good news. And I'm extremely happy. I love teaching because I like interacting with juniors. I'm sure a lot of people on this call would have been my students. I cover about 30 to 50 colleges in a year, visiting as a guest lecturer or conducting some case studies or classes or go and do campus recruiting. All right. They're very high on insight extremely passionate about creating an impact, extremely high speed and bias for action, very high on digital quotient and infectious optimism. And I know there are people on this call, despite all the statistics I read out in the first part of a presentation, which is dim and grim. These are the people who are saying, wait a minute, bring it on. I'm going to take this as a challenge. And therefore, they would love to be the needle in the haystack. Well, we as employers are looking for a needle in a haystack as we are looking for a star candidate. But believe you me, both the employers and the candidates out there who are listening to this presentation, the young MBAs, BTECs, MSCs, and what have you, they would like to be themselves a haystack of needles. So just look at that, okay? Instead of being a needle in a haystack, I'm saying being a haystack of needles. So congratulations, and please pull up your socks, put on your uh, tighten your girdle belt, put on a thinking caps, and go out there and take a place for yourself in the sun. All right. And therefore, COVID-19, ladies and gentlemen, industries are changing at an unprecedented rate. New entrants, new business models, ever increasing customer expectation, changing workforce. And believe you me, no industry. Jute, sugar, aviation, hotel, uh, plantations, chocolate, ice cream, steel, textiles, small scale, medium scale, you name it nobody's going to be immune. And therefore, they're all talk of, uh, of herd immu immunization, right? So therefore, collectively become immune. But that's easier said than done. And therefore, you really need to know what does it take to come out of this COVID-19 unscathed.
which results therefore in businesses changing, business models are disrupted, 47% jobs or more will disappear, innovation and agility is going to be the key buzz. So guys, you wanted action plan, right? What do we do? Start innovating, be extremely agile, right? Uh, I was told give some a uh, clear map which I'll cover later on but these are already giving you hints about what you need to do if you do not get an internship bring about a product of your own we'll cover that a little later on but do not sit hand on hand just be extremely agile uh, structures are changing more flatter organization there will be a lot of people who are going to be on temp jobs for three months six months probably some of you would want it that way because you want to change your hobbies but all that for a greener days, right now you need to be staying alive and therefore leadership and focus has got to be extremely high. Uh, workforce is changing. It's going to be global. It's going to be mobile. I don't know it's going to be global now because COVID-19, until COVID-19 came, it was global. But now it's all going to be people wanting to come back. I'm told about 1.6 million are going to be returning to India. which started today from all over the world. Okay. Uh, the why and the purpose of your life is extremely critical to be understood, to be redefined, understood and implemented. And most important, the order of the day is extremely high flexibility and mobility, social connection ish, but social distancing based social connection, which means extremely high centrality on online reaching out online business management, which brings me to a very picturesque slide, which you must have. I'm sure you must have seen it on. Um, um, on animal uh, planet and national geographic and the take on this picture is every morning in Africa a gazelle wakes up it knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it will be killed every morning a lion wakes up it knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death so in general Michael Jackson said it don't matter black or white I'm saying it don't matter if a lion or a gazelle, when the sun comes up, you better be running. The sun of COVID-19 has already come up. The corona is right there staring in your eyes. You got to run for sun, kill that virus, get the internal weather and systems extremely oiled to take on the battle or you'll be killed. So this picture of Burj Khalifa, which now stands from a brick mortar to now the way it stands, and that's all about transformation. Which brings me now to the last two parts of my presentation, the four bullets. We've done with the new normal, we've done with the challenges. We now need to see what is the action plan. Ladies and gentlemen, change is in the face. I do not have to belabor the point. You know it, it is right there sitting on your head. And therefore, this my 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 question to you is you as digital professionals of course all of you are human beings and i know that but the reason i emphasize digital professionals is everybody from a kisan to a panwala is a digital professional or potentially digital professional so what do you need to do the most important thing is you need to rewire your brain it's going to be complete re-architecture it's going to be complete re-engineering of yourself you know uh, uh marshall uh, goldsmith who coached me to become a coach he's written a fantastic book called what got you here won't get you there. I don't think there could have been a better context for Marshall Goldsmith's application to be really manifest. His theory is manifest. It's really about whatever you did till now, the marks you got, the way you studied, the way you worked and the way you retired have all undergone not just a minuscule change, but an absolutely exponential change. And therefore, you need to rewire your brain. How do you do that? Number one. Better make yourself obsolescence proof. So here's an action plan. Youngsters, young MBAs, interns, job seekers, just make yourself completely modern in terms of education. So unlearn, learn, relearn. I repeat, unlearn the old, the pre-COVID and the post-COVID is going to be very different. And in the process, become completely obsolescence proof. Okay. Um, I'm not going to read out this, but you can pick it up from the World Economic Forum. I love this slide because they actually talked about the skills which could be declining by 2022 and the skills which could be growing by 2022. So I've given you the reference. It's World Economic Forum. I won't, there's no time to read all of this. But by hunch, the only comment here is maybe because of COVID-19, even these skills are going to be reassessed and recalibrated. So that's where I said it's speed. Speed is the name of the game. Every morning a lion, every morning a gazelle. It's speed. 
its survival, its staying alive. Okay, I come to the last part because I'm expected to give you also some good tips, right? So how do you negotiate the road ahead? Okay, first thing is focus on what matters most. To begin with, I'm not going to do ask you to do a three-year strategy or five-year strategy. You don't even know how many of us and how we're going to stay alive. So first thing is staying alive. So whether it's staying safe, staying at home, respecting every which mandate that the government and the doctors and parents and elders tell us, please adhere to that in all humility. This is not our time for heroism and machoism. This is about being a humble civilian, civilians oriented person who's actually going to obey in most humility, in the utmost humility for his or her own good. Okay, so I have just put this cracking the code, which is nothing but really how you're going to attack. What's your action plan? Okay, so let's take with the stuff that's in the red, red bubble out there. Guys, gals, ladies, gentlemen, the stuff is going to be out of your control. Don't sweat about it. You ain't going to do anything. You can't do anything. A act of God, a sudden splurge, uncontrolled splurge. You just have to pray and protect yourself. Policies, geopolitical, NATO policies, United Nations, the huge country policies, label institution. You cannot do about it. You can at best opine, but it's here for. And most important, macro level geopolitical developments. And the list goes on. I can go on and go on stuff. You would yourself know as I speak. Uh, what's out of your control. So forget about it. Don't do coffee table discussions and get into great eloquence about discussing in your drawing table, in your drawing rooms uh, over a cup of coffee. It's nice chat. A lot of TV programs which give you this. It's nice to hear for knowledge, but don't bother. But there is stuff in your control and they're in two parts. There is stuff which is external, which is in your control, i.e. market, industry, job opportunities, new expansion plans, potential new domains, biotechnology, pharma, what have you, right? And basically, I call it an opportunity mining. This is to do with stuff which is in your control, but outside of your personality. When I say that, I juxtapose that with what I've said in the yellow bubble out there. There's stuff in your control, but which is internal. This is about leadership. This is about inner mastery. Ranger management, how do you overcome fear? How do you build resilience? How do you have hope? How do you keep a sense of humor? Your personal leadership. And I've written an acronym there called BAG. BAG stands for beliefs, attitudes, and goals. Guys, this is intra-psychic stuff. The praise you do, the philosophy you read, the self-help books you do, the role models you apply. This is the weather which is going to determine. You know, there's the 90-10 principle. There's... There's 10% which is outside your control. There's 90% which is in your control, and that is how you react to the 10% that's happen, happening in the red bubble. With regard to the blue bubble is not to it internally, it's about external change agents and factors, but in your control. So be very clear, your action plan has got to be in three, in two zones. In your control, internal, in your control, external. The out of control, have it for cognitive purposes, but do not allow it to get you bogged on. Am I right? So that's my symbolic way of tracking the code. So let's see, let's let's do a deep dive. How does it work? So first of all, guys, remember, what's your customer asking for? Whoever it is, the doctor, the patient, whoever, he's not asking, what can you do for me? He's asking, what else can you do for me? And this is, again, an action plan for you. Young interns, young job seekers, that else is nothing but your quintessential differentiator. Ladies and gentlemen, my question to you, are you a quintessential differentiator or you and also ran a me too product which has got sucked into the COVID-19 pressure? Are you saying, no, 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 bring it on. I have ideas. I have the internal persona, the amazing strength to take on this. Okay. So that's, that's very important. All of you heard VUCA. Well, welcome to the most crude, most intimidating, most horrendous manifestation of VUCA, the COVID-19. That's also your new normal. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Okay? Well-established and proven by this wonderful slide here where people are shown bathing on a beach. But one of my other gurus, Warren Buffett, he says, you get to know who has been swimming naked 
only when the tide goes down, right? What that means is all that swagger in your walk and the triangular talk and the style and the bravado is all exposed when the tide goes down, as in who's wearing and who's not wearing. Symbolic of, yes, COVID-19 will come and go whenever it goes, right? But the guys are going to stick it out, as the Darwinian philosophy says, the fittest. It's a stress test. So are you the person who is going to be exposed naked or are you going to come out unscathed out of all this? Let's see how it goes. So I, there is, there is, there is a, a VUCA prime model, right? You can beat volatility if you can develop a vision. Now you would say, so wait a minute, I don't have an internship. I don't have a job. So what kind of vision I'm going to have? Well, can I tell you, can you have a vision that you're going to be alive and you want to stay alive? Isn't that a vision? Get to grips with that first. I think that's super critical. Your jobs, your internship will always come through, and I'll tell you how to go about it. If there's huge uncertainty, do the deep dive analysis, do the big data science, big data analytics, and get an extremely high degree of understanding of the issue rather than getting psyched and nervous and depressed by it. How do you deal with complexity? Having an extremely calm and a great balanced right brain, left brain mind of clarity. And most important, guys, remember, whenever you're confronted with ambiguity, 99% get frozen and they're paralyzed. The winner is a guy who says, bring on ambiguity. I'm going to kill ambiguity with agility. So be very agile. Go meet people. Network with your alumni. All action plans I'm suggesting, right? So that's the way you're going to go and do that. Okay. Okay. Let's come to specifics. Action plan in your control, but external. Guys, can you think of doing pro bono projects? Because companies are not going to pay you now. They're short of finances. And I'm saying ubiquitously, which means across sectors, across cities, across roles, across functions. Just dirty your hands and go out there, you internships, you interns, and say there, sir, give me a job. I want to learn. I want to be occupied. I want to keep my brain alive. So action number one, do pro bono projects. Don't sit on your high and mighty chair saying, I'm from this premier institute and I need a great job because my seniors got it. That day is gone. Get into research. You don't have to wait for anybody to give you a job. Plethora of knowledge and choose any which domain. You know what? The data and the research will come out with, there'll be buyers who will pay you the big bucks to buy the research. Dip into it. Conduct the research. Find out various areas. It could be any which dimension. Third, explore unconventional areas. Farming to agriculture to fashion, I don't know, music to remote working. How do you, how do, you do that? And one trick here is to find out what is the industry looking at, right? I mean, for starters, you could well be a trainer on training people how to work online from home. And there are people who are already carving a niche for themselves. They're positioning themselves as experts about WFH, work from home experts. Now, this job didn't exist. It was an unconventional exploration. They went and they just skimmed it. Do extremely high professional networking. Go start meeting people. I know you cannot meet people, but on the call, database is there. Okay? Extremely important to stay relevant. And a famous saying in this is your net worth is your network or conversely your network is a net worth and therefore build huge my second slide on action plan for in your control but external get yourself presence extremely high on linkedin through cerebral contribution through reading a lot you may not be able to write often but read and be completely in the know of things get your skill upgradation as i said do you know there is even way how to teach people to be effective learners online because there are no classes. Yesterday, as you're seeing on television, about 26 universities in the US are now students are planning to say, give us give our fees back because we paid for the experiences. So what's going to be the kind of education going forward? It is going to be blended. The olden days of brick and mortar probably will vanish because people are already going to be, uh, they've already got accustomed to online teaching and online courses. The pros and cons will discuss later on. Okay, create new markets in it, which you talked about. Alumni networking. Go right to your respective alumni and all the information is available on LinkedIn and tell them, guys, I need help. If you can pay me well, fine. Otherwise, I'm willing to work to learn. And if nothing else, be a master of your domain. If you're an accounting professional 
or you're good at mathematics, you're good at economics, go and start teaching. There are people hungry to be taught. There are people hungry for knowledge. And if you have a pizzazz and panache for teaching, I took this up 25 years and let me tell you as a personal example, I took up teaching partly because I'm very passionate, but let me tell you a selfish reason for taking up teaching 25 years back. When you teach, you learn. So I had a very selfish objective of learning a lot and absorbing knowledge. And therefore I took to teaching because when you teach, you go and study. So those are your action plans, okay? And therefore you don't have to worry about, oh, I don't have resources. My favorite slide here, which I took from a friend of mine, it says, access trumps ownership. You do not have to have ownership of everything to use it. The classic case is Uber. You don't have to have a car to drive in a car. You can use Uber. You don't have to own all infrastructure of telecom. You can lease it. So please know access trumps ownership and therefore know how to do resource mobilization. And that's what access is all about. Okay. Now let's come to in your control internal. My rest of my next 10 minutes is going to be completely on this internal world of yours. And frankly, the kind of demands and coaching that I'm doing right now, people are saying, promote. we know the technical stuff, we know the data stuff. Please tell us how to handle ourselves. What's all that about? Re-architect, reinvent, renew yourself. Just reinvent. Go inside of yourself. Get in touch with your heart. When did you last sit for 10 minutes and made notes about yourself? about a day's behavior. When do you really sit and do some serious meditation? When do you really sit down and think about who you are, what's turning you on, what's turning you off? When do you last think you can actually design your destiny? You don't have to depend on external factors. And therefore, my summing statement is announce your arrival. That's an action plan by itself. Yes or no? And therefore, which brings me to a few concepts what is your inner world? Now I'm away from data, I'm away from science, mechanics, external world. I've dealt with that and we can discuss it till the cows come home. But this inner world is where people are failing. In fact, in COVID-99, the qualities required are empathy, strength, resilience, humor, toughness, mental toughness, not taught in business schools. You learn them from your parents, from your religious scriptures, from amazing stories of heroes like Gandhi, Martin Luther King, all those people, the big heroes, including from historical people, Ashoka, Vikramaditya, and all those people, right? So um, between low activation and high activation, and on this side is essentially um, uh, negative emotions, and these are positive emotions. So are, are you astonished, elated, are cheerful, and so so? So my question here is, these emotions, are they your drivers or are they your derivatives? Please answer this question tonight. Go and make a diary and put on these notes. My second thing is, please get a good view on what's your real self, who you really are. Are you still a victim of peer pressure what a dad, mom, friends, girlfriend, boyfriend wanted you to be? Or you really are very realistic about who you are, knowing extremely cold and clear manner, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And be brutally honest. At the same time, don't lose sight of what you want to be, your ideal self. That's quadrant two extremely important. Quadrant three, which kills everybody. As they say in Hindi, the lovely saying, Dunya mein sabse bada rog, kya kahenge log? Real other is what others tell really about you. If it's real, take it, repair it. As they say, a successful person is one who builds a home with the bricks that others throw at you. And therefore, understand your feedback. Real other is the feedback that parents, teachers, friends, everybody, they keep giving it to you. Just accept it and assimilate it and do not be in a denial mode. And lastly, the ideal other is what your ecosystem, your parents, brothers, sisters, boss, subordinate, employer, employee, the whole, your spouse, children, what they want you to be. So your behavior at any point in time is a confluence of these four quarters. Okay. So just keep this model. This is your action plan. Okay. Oh, the famous statement by Charles Darwin. It's not the strongest or the most intelligent will survive, especially in COVID-99. But those who can best manage change. And right now, one of the best ways to manage change is to be staying, stay, staying safe and staying home and staying alive. Come back as a winner. Do not try to be for momentary pleasure going out. You'll be the loser. I'm sure there are these questions. 
what are we doing? Why are we doing? Who will I work with in future? Who will I report to? What work will I do? Will I still have a job? A lot of people have lost jobs. 36 million in the US, 122 here. What will the new rules be? What's in it for me? And what help will I get? Very valid questions. Welcome to the big bad world of COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. These are going to be absolutely haunting you. No need to get intimidated. You just need to find solutions. Okay. So how do you find a solution? Is you need to manage your change very well. So there's a grid of supporting for change and change management efforts. So first thing is the preparation. Be brutally prepared. Approach out there for you to... Um, um, just one second. I'll get this back. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. And you just got stuck a little. All right. There you go. It took a minute. Okay. So you need to prepare. You need to create awareness, contact. You need to have huge acceptance. Very important. Denial is not going to give you any gains. And most important, in the acceptance stage, you need to have understanding. You need to have agility. You need to have positive perception. And lastly is the commitment. One of the biggest strengths to deal with COVID-19 is how do you commit yourself? in terms of installation, adoption, institutionalization, and eventually internalization. As I said, this is internal, in your control, internal, all right? And you will go through these emotions. When COVID-19 hits you, when crisis hits you, when you do not get a placement, when you don't get an internship, yeah? From a very stable, predictive model, you suddenly go into shock. In came COVID-19, May, June is the time when people got jobs. And people on this call, most of them are waiting for it. They're gone. First, they're in denial. No, 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 it's going to go away. No way. As I said, it's going to last for only the next two years. Then you get angry. Then you sort of start, wait a minute, let me now bargain. Okay, I would love to have a $100,000 salary, but it now sit down for 40000 Good deal, all right, if you get one. But then will that make you depression? depressed? So from depression is where you need to test your strength and come out, as I said, it's a stress test, and you come out adjusting in a very big way, okay? So largely three parts to dealing with, or three action plans to deal with COVID-19. One, build huge energy, not taught in business schools, not taught in, 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 in a PhD or in an MSc or an MTech. It's about internal strength. Learn from your role models, learn from your parents, friends, and success profiles, your sports stars, and film stars sometimes, if you will. And once you do that, Convert that into personal leadership manifestation. And once you do that, you need to persist. So those are the building blocks. And when Dr. Pillay asked me to come out with the action plan, how do you deal with this? These are stuff which is on the right trade. It is about internal uh, strength that you need to do. So up close and professional. Can you re-architect an aircraft while flying it? You would say, stupid concept. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all I wanted to point out was, welcome to the new world of transforming while performing. Even if you're not performing now, keep up your transformation agenda completely uh, alive and kicking. And therefore, the last few minutes of my presentation were the most powerful. You dealt with the outer VUCA. What about the inner VUCA? Three demons inside you, and those are inner VUCA. Your fear, your doubt, your worry. I bet everybody on this call is right now a derivative and a victim of these three things. Nothing to be ashamed of. All of us, the best ones, a giant stumble. So it's okay. Fear, doubt, and worry. Now you need to know and how a system cleans this out on a daily basis. And there is a method for it called cleaning. I'm going to talk about it. But the most important thing is you need to kill these demons outside, inside of you. And one way to do that is, as I said, access trumps ownership. All of you have access to intelligence. All of you have huge emotional reserves. And most important, the untapped in fact, may I say the biggest collateral advantage of COVID-19 is a lot of people have become very spiritual. They've become very minimalist. They've started questioning the hankering after glamour, glory, show of wealth, acquisitions, richness, useless. Their Gucci shoes, Armani suit and Hermes tie and Mont Blanc pen are rotting in your wardrobe right now. You can't even go and eat to a fine dining restaurant with all the money that you have. The only item you have right now on which you can revel and ex excel is your spiritual quotient. So I have a theory for all of you, which is my thesis, which I propounded. Your personal quotient is nothing but a function of, of course, you need IQ. 
of course you need eq but your multiplier factor this one is your sq let me explain this iq is 140 eq is 140 that's 280 280 into 0 is not 280 or not 460 280 into 0 is 0 proof of concept all those people who are in the in behind the bars today who are being questioned for integrity the way they manage the businesses and the way that they've been mentioned negatively in economic times and other front page news items it's a lesson to be learned that you got to be spiritually and ethically clean in fact if there is ever a time where you it's most required it's the covid 19 which brings me to the last part ladies and gentlemen the heart of the problem is a problem of the heart yes to me it's the age of heartful leadership so you interns you finally mbas you thought yes there is a systemic solution all those in your control external which i mentioned i've mentioned about 10 steps go and do that but the most important weapon arsenal that you have right now is how you're managing your heart and therefore one way to do this i do not have the time to go into this is please go and visit www.heartfulness.org it could well give that meditative technique the cleaning technique the profound sublimity that you'll experience which is most required for you to remain very calm, equanimity oriented, balanced to take on this havoc called COVID-19. So ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave you with my last slide. When do you want to start this? Someday, that is one day, or day one, which is tomorrow. You decide. It's your life. COVID-19 will come and go. You cannot allow it to destroy you. So you young professionals out there at all the B schools, engineering schools, Take it in your hands. Say, bring it on. Be humble. Stay alive first. Take it in your hands and say, yes, I'm going to weather the storm. I'll bear this trust just and I'm going to come out winner and not someday tomorrow, which is day one. And therefore, I want to decide that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for a very patient hearing. I've poured my heart out on this as if I was a student who's going through an internship. I was a student who's got an offer but has been told that the offer is not going to be valid because there are no jobs anywhere. So I put myself, given my heart and soul for this presentation. And hopefully I've given you a lot of tips, both to the left brain, the external stuff, and also a lot of building internal strength and internal willpower to take on this COVID-19 and post-COVID-19 havoc. It's going to go away provided we stand strong by first staying alive and by staying safe. With that, that's my LinkedIn account. Uh, that's my company website. Uh, that's my email. Please feel free, uh, feel free to write to me. It's been a pleasure. That's my Twitter account. Thank you so very much. I once again would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Pillay of Pillay Institute of Management Science and Research, uh, Dr. Nivedita Shreyans, uh, Dr. Pauskar, and Dr. Acharya, who really helped me with putting all this. I'm not sorry, who helped me put all this. And um, I hope this has been of uh, use to you, of value add to you, and it's one hour well spent. With this, I'll leave the floor open to questions. Please feel free to ask me anything. The only stupid question will be the one you won't ask. So don't worry, there are no stupid questions. Please bring them on. And I wish you all the very best to tide through this crisis. And may God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, I request uh, Lokande sir to uh, uh, begin uh, with the session. I'm trying to fix. Uh, there is some technical error for, from uh, Dr. Pramod sir's end. So I'm trying to fix it. Uh, till that time, please go ahead, Prashant sir. Lokande. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now, in the light of this rising concern about the Chinese uh, virus, request, uh, Chinese virus COVID-19 spread, Many companies have put hold on their placement process. Colleges in India are likely to face a tough year ahead with the disruption of their campus recruitment as the pandemic affects business worldwide. Generally, most businesses and engineering schools conduct campus placement between August to April every year. Management school is having a different uh, recruitment schedule and art, commerce, science, uh, journalism, architecture, they do have some different. But 
all the placement is uh, going to stop by the end of April or max to May. While many students have been placed already, some will struggle to find a good job offer. So during this pandemic and this prolonged lockdown to combat this Chinese virus COVID-19, few companies are deferring to offer made. While some have withdrawn offers made already, still there are companies also that are honoring the offer made to the student and will not cut any salary. So this is the major issues like um, in front of many training and placement offices, some of the companies they are contacting that they wanted to extend the joining period. Some of the company they said, okay, sir, we don't, uh, we are not in position to like give the employment so that we are revoking the offer. Similarly, many large companies, including technology giants such as PCS, l and Infotech, Sunmark, Google, GP, Majesco, Capgemini, they are honoring their job offers made to the campus high risk, despite weak revenue outlook caused by this Chinese virus. Other than technology company, some FMCG majors like Godrej, Pepsi, Bipon, Hindustan Unilever, the consultancy firms like Boston Consulting Group, BCG, Bain and Company, and Mac PMC, and the banks like ICICI Bank, Kotak Mahindra, City, and Axis Bank are also honoring their job offers. So, sectors including banking, financial services, and insurance, retail, logistic, delivery, where a lot of frontline hiring is going, uh, taking place. And they are likely to witness delay in offer made to the graduates. More companies will now depend on technology as an alternative channel to continue with some of the, the pace of productivity. Now, there, are, uh, there is a very uh, big concern is going on among the students. So what will we do if the company is going to withdraw my offer? Now, what is the next opportunity available for me as the campus placement is going to finish because we are going to pass out. Now, we are totally depend on the company that we already place on. Similarly, when demonetization came, it has given an opportunity to the different digital payment app businesses. It has given the opportunity to flourish the various like a payment app company that is Paytm, then Phone Pay, Amazon Pay, Google Pay, Tej. So all these payment apps they came into the market. When they came into the market, they came up with certain requirements. They need a skill manpower, which is required to fulfill their requirement. The marketing, sales guys, the uh, commerce guys. So all the like complete. Uh, set of employment was generated by these businesses. Similar to this, COVID-19 will give the opportunity to remote working application and services. The e-learning, virtual workplaces. So these are the some of the spaces. And the major like businesses they are going to like uh, take over is the e-commerce, banking, insurance, so they will be in the good demand in this particular way. Now, during this time period, if the student is stick with their, you know, I want a particular job, then these type of like things are not available mostly. So they need to compromise on that, upgrade their skill periodically, and then go for the other. Now, some of the challenges that non-IT employment sector they are facing. So there are uh, quite a good amount of jobs are available for IT company with the IT companies. But for the non-IT employment sector, very few companies are coming in to provide the internship, to provide the jobs. Now here the role of training and placement officer is very important. Uh, training and placement officer, a simple two word term, training and placement. This is not limited with the training and placement. A training and placement officer is a person who is playing the role of salesman, who is playing the 
role of brand ambassador to his college. He's also playing a role of marketing guy. He's a motivator. He's also like playing a role as a teacher, evaluator, and all other like administrative works of his organization. This is what like he is a complete package and his networking, his skill is important during this time period. Training and placement is always a rejection business. When you are contacting 100 companies, so hardly two companies they are entertaining you or two companies they wanted to like honor your request. So in that event, the thing which will be putting is Yes, we have Shailendra Pavaskar sir here. Hello sir, how are you? Fine ma'am, good afternoon ma'am. Good afternoon. Now, Shailendra Pavaskar sir is a faculty for M MMS College of Arts and he also heads the IT department of uh, PIMSR. So, uh, sir, now, I think uh, you guys are in demand now, IT people. So, are you feeling happy about it? Not really. Yeah, because you know, I, I think my voice is equal. Yes, I can, I can hear you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Tell me. So I said now IT people are in demand. You know, like everybody wants to go online. Everybody wants to do uh, activities on digital platforms because live events are not available. So what do you think uh, about this scene right now? And what? how do you think will the demand increase for IT students, computer students, software uh, students? Yes, yeah. yes, ma'am. Uh, definitely, the uh, IT will increase uh, because, see, uh, most of the people are working from home. In that case, uh, we, all the small companies or uh, major companies will definitely require uh, IT people, maybe to handle the network, uh, maybe to handle their uh, database. Uh, again, to handle their infrastructure. So definitely, there will be a huge demand for your uh, for our IT people. Maybe it from uh, management side or maybe from the engineering side. Both will have a equal opportunity. See, uh, like we are now controlling our own webinar through different platforms. These platforms are basically our uh, to do the major one and the Facebook is another major one. And then we have a Zoom and Google Meet. See, all these platforms are going to increase basically due to requirement of the people who are there in the market who are working from home. So I think the huge requirement is there. See, again, uh, I want to tell you one thing. Uh, the, as per the statistic which is released from various newspapers and online research journals currently during the lockdown period, this shows that although there will be a recession kind of thing which will be going on, but the requirement for the people, the IT people, the skilled people will definitely increase. See, uh, we we normally access this particular webinars or maybe online lectures from laptop. Now, the people, the students, the people, the working class, they all need an application which will be played on their mobile device also, maybe on their laptop or tablets also. So all these particular technical things, all the people are not aware of. See, after lockdown, people will start developing this kind of tools and techniques. So the demand for programmers, the system engineers, and a business developer, because we, 
if i am developing this particular software or an application definitely i am going to sell this particular thing in a market so definitely the it people who are developing this particular softwares and application will have a huge opportunity definitely and there are marketing people who are actually going to sell this products or services in the market again we'll have a wonderful opportunity wherein they will be actually convincing people to use this product see as the statistics which are going on in the market from cnn and other channels after lockdown many people or many many companies they are going to give an opportunity for the people or a student to work from home so according to them the 40% to 50% of the crowd the people or the student will have an opportunity to work from home so definitely there will be a increase in this particular scenario after the lockdown and definitely uh, the people who are there in a the market will also look for our opportunity to work from home so now the scenario might come up after lockdown that there is no need for a people to go to the companies to work physically major of the things which can be done from home so there could be a new opportunity for or maybe a new area for the companies to give a people opportunity so they can work from home uh, this this may be also uh, having a disadvantage and advantage from the company side they may uh, actually save some money in providing resources a place for them to work the electricity bill they are going to use the ac power they are going to use that can be saved some more somewhat in exchange if they are giving an opportunity for work so definitely uh, nivedita ma'am there will be a huge demand for it people or a marketing people to after a lockdown for this particular uh, uh, products or a services which uh, people are going to develop later on there is one question on the screen what about telecom industry uh telecom industry definitely without telecom we are not able to hear anybody we are we are here right now i am talking to you all people here definitely with the help of telecom industry see now uh, when few years back some jio came with an offer of uh, providing free internet it was like are how do i going to use this free internet they are cheating us they are not provide us but then after some time most of the people started using jio they shifted from one telecom industry or company to another one so yes. this shows that something it was offered previously with huge amount of money is now been available at a cheaper rate or or at a nominal rate so definitely this is going to help us the telecom company is going to help us in providing this kind of infrastructure which is required for online platforms so we i was just talking about uh, people or student working from home now definitely without this help of this telecom uh, industries or uh, the facilities they are providing to work from home this is not uh, going to be a possible so they are going to play a ma major role in this particular thing now again all the job opportunities will also come in this particular industries for uh, many of our student maybe for the internship or maybe for a final placement i, I think we should try in this kind of industry which are there uh, during lockdown also they are working very fine uh, they are they are like emergency services for us right now yes yes ma'am okay so uh, um, i think uh, we were able to give some insights today from this talk uh, 
Anything else Prashant Lokhande sir would like to add? Is Prashant Lokhande sir there? Uh, I can see one, one question ma'am. Yes. On my screen uh, from yes. Anuj Radha Krishnan. Yes. Uh, Go ahead so please. With your permission I would like to answer that also. Yes. What about HR student? <laughs> Definitely uh, you will have a great again a scope there. Because a uh, company will require to hire a people and definitely HR person is going to help them selecting a better student, a good student or a good person, skilled person that particular job. So whatever kind of job is available, HR person is going to identify that person and include that person. So definitely again. Yeah, I, I need to add one more thing here. HR person can also have a scope of work from home because all the things, all the platforms which are available nowadays, you need to select or work on the profile of a student and then select a better candidate and selection of that candidate can be forwarded to the company head person so hr again have a scope of definitely working from home okay yes i think i think uh, now hr people have got more work because now they have to look after the health benefits more of the employees the scope of work is more for hr candidates now because their responsibility improves here more because you have to look after the uh, safety of the employees. You have to look after the safety of the customers. You have to look after the safety of your infrastructure. So everything depends on the HR uh, department. So they, there'll be more load and there'll be more need of HR people. In fact, the challenging point, what I feel here, Shailendra Pavaskar sir is, whether how many of, uh, the youth, how many of the employees would like to go back to the companies and work? At least for the next six months to one year, everybody is going to stay in the fear of this pandemic, fear of this corona. So again, there is a big challenge in front of industry that they need a right candidate to be recruited. So even industry has to go, is going to face a challenge of getting people to work on site. Because now I think the trend will be everybody would would like to shift to work online, work from home. But there might be less people who, who might be wanting to go to companies and work. That is what I read a service recently that most of the people out of 10, seven people, they don't want to go back to company due to safety hazards. They are worried about the health. So how they all have to cope up with this stress and anxiety. So I think here the HR department will have to step in to make to make attractive policies, to make uh, interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, interesting awards, rewards for the candidates to come and work in the company. At least for next six months to one year, I think the trend will be everybody would like to be at home, safe, work online, avoid going out maximum as much as possible. Because until unless we get the vaccine out, we don't feel safe. We all will not feel safe. So again, that there is a new angle to it. Again, there is a new way of thinking to it for the HR people. And those who will pick up the opportunities, there are chances that they might get paid well at this point of time. There are chances to earn much more higher salaries for HR people to work on site compared to what they used to get earlier because of they stepping in the companies on right time. So I think there is a new angle to it for the HR side. And I think HR students must gear up and must be ready to take this uh, opportunity, take this challenge and go and, uh, you know, uh, put yourself uh, uh, in the industry on time so that you can get bigger and better benefits. This is what I, I have read somewhere. So uh, this fear factor is going to be there in everybody's mind for at least six months to one year. So I, I just met a doctor the day before yesterday and he told me, uh, Madam, you will have to survive with this for one year. One year we all have to survive with the pandemic. 
we have to make ourselves mentally strong and we have to follow social distancing very carefully we have to look after our immunity once we follow social distancing we avoid crowd we must avoid going to parties and marriage automatically we safeguard ourselves so staying alive is an important mantra for 2020 right now and if you stay alive then you can get better jobs in 2021 so this is what the scenario scenario is all over plus uh, in the in, in pramod stock you can see lot of people will be coming from abroad to india you you must have seen just now trump has started announcing that h1b visa people must go back to india they must not take away jobs of us citizens so they are been asked they have been asked to go back to india so like that different different countries might be sending back people to their respective countries so there are, there are a lot of chances that huge migration of our own indians are going to happen back to india so they all have to survive in this competition the best of brains like a brain drain they all left india but now there are chances that they all might come back and they all might be competing for jobs again there is a challenge here for our youth they have to compete amongst this top brains which has gone abroad and come back to india so they really need to skill up themselves they really need to make themselves prepared to handle this sort of competition also so these are all various aspects which are going to happen after this pandemic i mean so many changes are going to happen plus they should be ready for salary cut because due to the huge losses what companies have gone through students have to compromise for lower packages so please students be prepared to accept the packages with low salaries because right now the important part for the company is to survive they really need to have a better cost management so survival is important for them if they survive at least for one year or two years automatically you will also survive so please do not focus more on salary angle try to focus more on the experience what you are going to get do not be rigid on salary do not be rigid on what department what portfolio what profile you are going to get just jump in to whatever profile suits you i mean that profile might be fifth on your checklist fifth on your select list but then if you are getting offer on that fifth profile you must jump for it you must take an experience of it and you must see see to it that you survive in this scenario surviving in the market surviving in the corporate world surviving your job surviving your health you know is the latest mantra for pandemic so no rigidity but flexibility should be the anthem for all the youth whoever is going to go for this this is what i feel what else selendra pawaskar sir yeah I, i had one more question here kapila uh, akriti raj so there would be more freelancer job yes uh, for freelancer kind of thing rather than freelancing something you start up your own company you there is a be like now nivedi ma'am i mean just there are a lot of people coming back from uh, road so they have they may have some huge amount of talent with them so you try to get up with them join them start a free rather than starting a freelancing company or be doing freelancing start up small new startup with them so it will help also in creating jobs for your colleagues and so on three four of you can come together start a new company it could be a startup company no issue you will face some trouble everybody is going to trouble so you face the trouble for getting job also so rather than facing trouble in getting job start up your own company and face the trouble for 6 month or so uh, it, it will definitely work out in some extent and you can have a good opportunity there uh, hopefully after some time maybe a year or so you will be appointed to people Uh, no I, i appreciate firstly um, on behalf of the entire team my apologies that uh, you know because of technical glitches we couldn't uh, see through right from the beginning this aspect about going through google meet uh, but i'm glad about 150 people uh, participated so therefore it hasn't gone waste 
And of course, also uh, Mr. Lokande and Dr. Nivedita did a fantastic session. They took on some really great practical questions. So I'm sure you guys benefited with that from that. And I try to put in my conceptual uh, and the research in my presentation. So I appreciate 150 odd people who, have, uh, who made the time to stay back. And we thank you for that. Thank you for giving the opportunity to share our information and insights. Um, I'm still around. If there's anything, uh, Dr. Nivedita, you would like to process or ask? I, if the questions are there, we can take it. Otherwise, uh, we can conclude it. Uh, and really kind of those, I really kind to those <coughs> students and our faculty members who have stayed back with us, around 160 of them are still there. With us. I agree. They are there with us since 12 o'clock and it is <coughs> 30 now. But then, um, thank you so much. I mean, if you, 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 you were not around, this event wouldn't have been possible. So I'm, I'm yeah. definitely sure we are, the attempt, our attempt was to give good inputs and insights to our students, to our faculty members, that how they can fight in this situation. That was our attempt and we have made a sincere attempt from our side. And though we had a technical challenge uh, happening, still we tried to uh, handle the situation in a right way. So a big thank you to Ashish Tripathi, sir. Is he there, Ashish Tripathi? Yes. I mean, the world yes, Dr. Ashish. we have, we yes. have really yes, worked since yesterday. Thank you so much. And Shailendra Pavaskar, sir. I mean, the two warriors on the field since yesterday. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> my my huge personal thanks to Thank you, yes. Dr. Yeah. Like they, they were like warriors since yesterday, trying to set up the whole YouTube channel, trying to work up the link. This is what the challenge is. I think we all need to prepare ourselves to this new technical challenges, technological world, which yeah. we are not ready and we really need to brush up our skills. <laughs> <coughs> so now I you know, request, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor, please. there's a saying. They say technology is a good slave and a very bad master. And <laughs> Mr. Pauskar and Doctor Tripathi will definitely agree with it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, Shailendra Pauskar, sir, you can propose a vote of thanks now. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I think you, I can hear. Uh, yes, I'm audible, yeah. right? Audible, yes, clear. Yeah. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, sure. Today we have almost a thousand participants watching us live through YouTube channel. I, Professor Shalendra Pavaskar, on behalf of Imsar, thanks them all. Uh, we could not conduct a promoter's session on uh, YouTube channel due to some uh, audio issues. But definitely, uh, indeed, it was a wonderful informative session by promoter when we shifted to our uh, meet platform. We thank Pramod uh, sir for his excellent research done on a topic and what ahead lies after the lockdown. We also thank our uh, founder KM Vasudev Pillay sir, our co-founder. No, for providing us this opportunity and infrastructure to successfully conduct this webinar. Thank you, uh, Dr. Priyam, sir, COO, for encouraging and standing by us and having faith us in us to host this first online public event of Pim, sir. Thank you for your valuable guide, uh, guidelines, tips, ideas to conduct this event, sir. Thank you, Pranav, sir, for a social media campaign and support given by, by his team. I uh, thank uh, Dr. C.K. Shridharan, sir, our director in charge for always being very positive and giving us all the support whenever we need it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nivedita Shreyan Spam, for spearheading this series of webinars, starting with alumni uh, webinar, and now we are shifting towards the corporate webinar with the eminent industry speakers. Uh, I also want to thank Dr. Ashish Tripathi for his untiring day and night effort and to bring or build this particular technical system to set up YouTube channel, feedback system, e-certificate. Uh, it's a great contribution by him. I also uh, thank uh, Prashant Bukhande sir for his insight on today's placement scenario with major companies. 
thank you miss uh, mr uh, francis for inspiring us training and helping us to set up this youtube live webinar uh, i thank all the faculty members of mes institute who have taken time to join this webinar and making a huge success we uh, thank all the top level corporates and team placement officers students of various academic institution at state and national level for joining us in this seminar uh, various organization of uh, organization of micro and uh, macro level for joining us i thank all the participants who have joined us from all over places across india special thanks to our faculty members of pipsar for their support and finally thank you all the students of all the various campuses for joining us who have taken time attended this webinar and also have a wonderful uh, for being a wonderful audience uh, soon you will be uh, uh, getting a link for a feedback form so as soon as you fill the feedback form your e certificate will be downloaded thank you uh, be safe stay at home thank you very much thank you so much pramod for your kind uh, thank you guidance <laughs> and so much of hard work you did on your whole presentation it's a lot of hard yeah. work what we can see and uh, definitely yeah. we'll uh, <clears throat> have one more youtube talk very soon sure. we will do sure. the setup and uh, we will make it in a very big way thank you yeah. uh, to our management board priyam sir chelendra yes. sir sridharan sir ashish tripathi swati <clears throat> ghosh for giving the idea lokhande sir for being there helping us so thank you all of you and thank you wonderful lovely students teachers and faculty members for being so kind and grateful to us thank you and catch up soon on the next webinar by our alumni uh, in the field of finance very soon we will come right. up with a new webinar thank you all of you god bless you and i'm sure everybody must be hungry now so we better go and eat food and fill up our tummies thank you so thank you, much thank you dr nirmala yes thank you, thank you. and please convey my regards to dr pillay and sure. dr priyam thank you sure. so much thank, thank you me. thank you ashish thank you shailendra bye thank you ma'am thank you sir yeah thank you